Hi guys, today is a, a short update about my GPS discipline NTP Stratum 1 server. Uh, some more details that I missed in the last video, in the main video. Uh, making this video because it seems that uh, the interest is far higher than I ever expected, to be honest. And I got some requests, questions, etc. So I will show you a little bit more details of the insights and explain a few more things why I did what I did. So the first thing is, let's open it. Okay, to open the box, we have to remove the complete back plane. I already removed some of the screws, most of them. And the two screws on the top of the front plate. Then this whole thing comes out. You can open it. It's holding like that with the big on the big seal pad. After that, you can remove the complete board. Remove the antenna. Put it aside. So that's the board. That's the complete construction. Raspberry Pi R1 with the complete OS image for a full Raspbian Linux, uh, Arbion, sorry, full Arbion Linux with all the necessary uh, NTP additions, I2C, drivers, etc. Uh, because it is a complete Arbion, I'm using NTPD. It is a complete open system, not like some other mini NTP servers with a closed system and a web server that you can configure it and that's it. This thing you can modify however you want from the software side of point of view. That means instead of NTPD, you can use Crony. Instead, instead uh, NTP, you can use PTP, etc. The hardware platform supports all of that. The software and the operating system is the playground of you or of the software developers. As I said, this was uh, a design I made upon, rec upon uh, specifications of uh, my friend's company that should keep down the costs as much as possible at that time. This was designed three years, four years ago. Then this is why an Orange Pi R1 was used and not a Raspberry. Raspberry is much too expensive. And the other thing is that the Raspberry has all the USB ports broken out to connectors. I don't need that. I need the USB ports on this, on this side, on the headers. This base PCB was used, oh sorry, was used on another design I made and uh, set a box for another customer. This is why you see here unused a header connector. Because of this thing is, the software is completely open. If somebody is uh, skilled enough 
to make the to change the boot behavior of this thing. I've included here an USB A female connector where you can insert a miniature USB stick. And then you can boot from that instead of the TF card that yeah has this problem. If you fall if you let it fall, this will go out. Yeah. Another question I had is from where do I get this cup these caps, this protective caps? Yeah, where from where? AliExpress. You get everything from there. I love AliExpress. Even these high connectors, these high header female connectors are from AliExpress. They are mostly used on the Raspberry Pi GPIO connector or something like that. You see how high they are, but they are perfect for the distance pilers I'm using here. On the back here, you can see the terminal, the serial terminal of the Raspberry, the console port of the Raspberry, uh, the, I, I say always Raspberry, sorry, Orange Pi R R1. This thing is routed directly and brought out to these three pins. So you can use it directly with a USB to serial or, or RS-232 to TTL. If you want to use this header, you have to open this to bridges that I have here. Otherwise, the console port is directly connected to the external USB to serial converter I've added here. Uh, from the power supply point of view, you need a 12 volt power supply, wallboard power supply, wallboard connector. It's fused with the PTC, reverse polarity protection, over voltage protection. You know, I have an on port switcher, switch mode power supply, a very low noise power supply. I was using exactly the same one for RF applications. Additionally, with a grow bar output over voltage protection. The specifications I got to make this thing were two Ethernet ports. See here the second one. An optional Wi-Fi port. This is here. I provisioned it already, but it's not connected. The connector of the antenna is on the bottom side of the, or better, better said, on the top side of the, rush, of the orange pie. Um, another specification request was um, to use a dedicated real-time clock chip, temperature compensated real-time clock chip, battery backed. I'm using the DS3231. It is a well-known chip and it almost every Linux distribution, so the Armbian 2 has drivers for it. It's battery packed. Another uh, further, uh, the last specification was or request was to have interchangeable GPS GNSS modules. I'm using this. PCB here, that's another design I made, and it's absolutely compatible one-to-one -one drop in replacement with the cheap AliExpress modules you can buy. Of course, this is made with my specifications and with a very with a correct RF design. 
you can use all the Neo series. It's, you can use all the Neo series U-Block uh, chips for that. The I2C EEPROM e is only necessary for U-Block chips that do not have an internal flash. That means the complete NM5, NM6 and part of the NM7 series. The onboard battery backup is only for a short time and this thing would be then for the long time retention if you use an NM6 instead of an NM8. Uh, a further tip is if you, you for if you want to use that and you want to use it with more than one GNSS system so to speak, uh, not only with the GPS, but uh, for with Clonas and Galileo too. You should set the boat rate of the serial board from 9.6 to 56K, otherwise you will lose packages. You will lose packages even so if you remove all the unnecessary NMEA commands. It is still too much that's coming out from these chips. I had these problems and I was chasing it for yeah almost a half a day because I was seeing it on um, satellites with a full signal to noise ratio go and come. I, I was losing satellites and then they reappeared. And then I checked and I saw that I'm I'm use I'm losing packages. This is a problem. It is too much for 9.6. The power, the, you get too many, too, too many packages for that. So, what else is to say here? Nothing more. As I said, the complete design, design files and everything are available upon request. I already sent it to a few people that requested, that asked it if they can have it including the uh, complete image of the of the of the system itself uh, I'm absolutely not a Linux expert far 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 away from that every time I need something I want to do something I have to google it uh, the request of the customer was to have a basic working system and this is what I delivered. Everything else would be fine-tuned from his developers. So this thing is completely open. But, um, put whatever you want, crony, PTP, whatever you want, whatever is possible with this Linux system. Yeah? Uh, I, for myself, made a cheat sheet with all the commands I used with all everything that I installed on this system because uh, in a couple of weeks I wouldn't remember it anymore because I'm not interested on in that this cheat sheet would be available on request too if somebody wants to make his own image from scratch but well, yeah, that means you know what you're doing and you, you're very keen, you're very skilled with uh, Linux and RBM and all the NTP necessary parts, software parts that are needed. So that's the hardware. I hope I didn't forget anything. We can put it together again. This is how it goes inside. So let's close it again. One of the most important things of the whole system is to use this enclosure, this aluminium, massive aluminium enclosure, as a heatsink. To do that, you need quite a high sill pad. I use the sandwich, sandwich is seal pad to 
to transfer all the heat from the back of the orange pie directly to the heat sink. That way, in that way you have a quite powerful system with no fans and completely passive cooled silent. The USB to serial converter chip I'm using is a CH340. It's a readily everywhere available in China, LCSC or whatever you want, a very stable chip, but you will have to add the driver for it because in Windows, in the Windows uh, driver store, this driver is not included. Well, that's it. I hope I answered all the questions. Uh, if you like my videos, if you like what you see, please press the like button and please subscribe to my channel. This will help me to grow the channel. And I have many, many uh, designs I, can, I want to show you in the future and a lot of other stuff on electronics and in mostly RF, power electronics, analog electronics and high voltage. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and have a nice day. Cheers.